everybody should love themselves. There are things to love about yourself, but I don't feel like you should love yourself to death. And I feel like that's what I almost did. When they talked about someone being overweight, I thought they meant being huge. We weren't huge, but we were overweight. My body does not deserve it, so I need to do something about it. According to the World Health Organization, in 2016, 39% of adults were classified as being overweight, while 13% were classified as obese. There are now more people in the world who are overweight than those who are hungry or malnourished. The relationship between health and weight is a complex one, and with the growth of popular movements like the body acceptance movement and the fat acceptance movement in recent years, one can ask the question, can you be overweight and still be healthy? First, we can start by understanding how one can be classified as being overweight or even obese. The categorization of the relationship between health and weight is used worldwide by means of the body mass index. BMI is a simple formula used to calculate the relationship between someone's weight and height by obtaining a measurement of how much body mass someone's body holds in relation to their height. In theory, it stems from the assumption that if two people are the same height and one of them has a higher volume of body mass, then that individual will have a higher volume of body fat mass. However, individual weight doesn't vary just based on fat mass. Our bodies are comprised of skin, muscle, bone, water weight, organs, much more. And BMI doesn't distinguish between these types of body tissue. So from here we can start to see some exceptions to the rules. Bodybuilders, athletes, people who are very muscular tend to have higher volume of lean muscle tissue. And because muscle tissue in volume comparison is heavier than fat, their height to weight relationship may well put them in the overweight or obese category even when they are perfectly healthy individuals. A different example can be women who are genetically predisposed to having natural larger breasts. Because of their volume, the breasts will be heavier and naturally their overall body weight will be a little bit higher than otherwise, but that doesn't mean the individual as a whole is overweight. And also, breast tissue is not something that can be reduced with just diet and exercise. In fact, BMI was created to measure and study populations as opposed to individuals. It's also important to note that BMI ranges are not applicable to all populations. Elderly populations, for example, have a higher risk of loss of muscle tissue and bone density, so a higher BMI is usually preferable. Even among populations of adult age, BMI has been criticized for not accounting for genetic and ethnic differences. For example, according to the Harvard School of Public health, when compared to white Europeans of the same BMI, Asians have higher total body fat. In contrast, some studies have found that black people will have lower body fat and higher lean muscle mass. So for these populations, the threshold of becoming overweight or obese will be different than when using the standard guidelines for white Europeans. Okay, so BMI is flawed. What is a better way to measure the relationship between weight and health? Another way that experts have tried to steer away from the BMI classifications is to look away from the weight figures and focus instead on the metabolic health. So so the assumption is that those who fall under the overweight or obese category of BMI should still be considered healthy if they fall within the healthy levels of these markers. The location of body fat is still an important factor. A big health risk is excess visceral fat. While the common belly fat is a layer of fat that sits directly under the skin, visceral fat lies deeper within and surrounds your internal organs. Visceral fat is also not still and it acts in fact as an organ in its own right, producing hormones and inflammatory molecules which have been strongly linked to metabolic disease and insulin resistance, even for individuals under the normal BMI category range. Having an elevated percentage of visceral fat may earn you the label of being skinny fat or tofi, thin outside, fat inside. I personally don't like these terms and medically they're described as being metabolically obese normal weight. And it refers to people who are of a normal weight according to BMI standards but still face risks for health problems the same way as an obese person would. It has also been shown that carrying fat in the legs or the hips, such as in your classic pear-shaped body type, is less associated with health risks than your classic apple body type. Because this body type is associated with a higher volume of visceral fat around the waistline which is proven to contribute to many unhealthy conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, and even some cancers. For this reason, measuring the weight circumference is also an important measure to identify possible health risks. So summing up this whole section, I think it becomes clear that there is a very gray line between what is considered healthy and what is considered overweight in terms of BMI classifications when it comes to health risks. This leads us to the next level of this discussion, which is healthy obesity. The concept of healthy versus unhealthy obesity is a very controversial topic. Some defend that while it is undeniable that obesity is bad for health, there are differences in individuals in the extent to which it's bad, since people at the same BMI can have different health risks. This opinion is 
is controversial in the field because of the undeniable mountains of evidence resulting from decades of research that explain the relationship between obesity and the elevated risk of conditions like diabetes, heart attacks, stroke, chronic illnesses, cancer, heart disease, gallstones, breathing problems, and literally dozens of other diseases. Many experts defend that because being overweight is a precursor to potentially becoming obese, then all the health risks associated with obesity are health risks that overweight people will eventually be subjected to in the long run, so they don't believe that being overweight can be healthy. There is also the argument that healthy obesity is clinically motivated because it helps doctors triage the growing adult obese population into those who most urgently require treatment from those who don't. Theoretically, the risk of disease and death would be lower amongst the healthy obese individuals than the unhealthy obese individuals, so targeting medical care to the second group may be more prudent since medical healthcare systems are usually under so much pressure. This is not a very good thing due to the stigma that obese patients already face in the medical setting. The first thing he said was, I am going to need to mention straight away that you are morbidly obese. He said to me, you either lose weight now or don't bother. To be honest, I'm surprised you're not dead already. Obese people tend to avoid their doctor because they don't want to get a lecture on their weight. And this can be a very dangerous thing. I found a quote from a doctor who explains that if the person is fat, the doctor may diagnose weight as the problem, prescribe weight loss as the treatment, and send them on their way without further diagnostic tests or treatments. But if the person is not fat, they are much more likely to receive scans and treatment at the time of the complaint. Not only does this promote weight-based stigmas in our society, it can also discourage overweight and obese people from seeking medical care when they need it, causing both mental and physical damage. The doctor I went to, I mean, right away, she just said, oh, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. And that's exact words she said, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm like, they made me feel so belittled that I just wanted to get out of there and just say, forget it. I got overlooked on a lot of health issues. Sometimes, excess weight may not be the cause of those illnesses, it might indeed be a symptom. For example, if someone suffers from insulin resistance, which can happen to people who are not obese or overweight, and they start gaining weight because of it, then the weight gain is a symptom of the illness and not the cause. But at the same time, carrying around a lot of excess weight may aggravate their issues, for example, by increasing the risk of diabetes. So it doesn't mean that weight loss is never the right or necessary treatment, but the problem begins when body weight becomes the central focus and weight loss is used as the main cure for everything, when in fact there may be other issues at play that should be treated first. Again, the term healthy obesity is considered to be flawed because obese people, even those considered to be metabolically healthy, are still at an increased risk for a number of conditions including type 2 diabetes, chronic kidney disease and overall mortality. And if this hasn't manifested itself right away, it's still a risk that needs to be watched closely. I was fat, but like, I was healthy. My blood work was fine. Everything was fine, so I'm fine. That's one of the big things I always remember thinking. And I was pre-diabetic. I was diagnosed at the age of 16 or like 17. I was on medication for it. I was pre-diabetic and I just didn't care. My blood work was always fine. I always thought, oh wow, like, <laughs> I'm okay. Like, my blood work is fine. I'm okay. Well, then I guess I'll keep eating then. Even if your blood work is fine right now, you don't know what will happen in a year. You don't know if the last slice of pizza that you're eating is gonna give you a heart attack. Before I move on, I feel like I need to mention a debate that caused a lot of confusion a few years ago. In 2013, a meta-analysis published in the Journal of the American Medical Association analyzed almost 100 studies on the association between BMI and all-cause mortality. The 97 studies are a combined sample of 2.8 million individuals and 270,000 deaths, which is a very significant sample size. However, the results confused experts greatly. While grade 2 and grade 3 obesity were indeed associated with higher mortality when compared to normal weight individuals, grade 1 obesity was actually not associated with higher mortality, and being overweight was associated with the lowest mortality. The media, of course, <laughs> went wild. Was this study suggesting that being overweight would make you live the longest? Obviously, scientists were confused because this study seemed to contradict decades of research on the relationship between excess weight and health. How could excess weight be linked to the increased risk of dozens of life-threatening diseases and, at the same time, make you live longer? This became known as the obesity paradox. But science is science. Scientists couldn't just ignore a piece of evidence because it's inconvenient. So what they did was they turned to look at the data and 
they had to do it fast because it was just a matter of time before fast food companies were going to start using this study as a backup for their marketing campaigns. What they found was that the data used in the studies was biased. For example, they included data from individuals who were smokers. It is known that nicotine suppresses appetite, which will make you lose weight, but smoking also kills you. So if you are thinner because you smoke, then you may be included in the group of people who are under the normal weight range. However, you will still be at a higher risk of death, not because you are thin, but because you smoke. The second bias they found was people who were included in the studies who suffered from conditions that caused unintended weight loss. Examples of this are depression, chronic lung or heart disease, hidden tumors, or alcoholism. So these individuals had a lower weight because of their illnesses, which in turn were the cause of their higher mortality. So a new study was done excluding these biases, the largest study on BMI and all-cause mortality in over four continents and 10 million individuals, and the results were clear that being overweight and all grades of obese was associated with increased all-cause mortality in all four continents. For the final section of this video, it's worth having a look at what may health look like when considering if being overweight can be healthy. The definition of health by the World Health Organization is that health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Firstly, I would like to highlight that the definition of health is very different than the definition of worth. Everybody, whether living in a larger or smaller body, is worthy. Your worth is not dependent on the size of your body and it's not dependent on whether you have or do not have illnesses. Even if someone's weight affects their health, that does not determine whether that person is more or less worthy as a human being. Back to looking at the definition of health. From the definition, we can see that health is not determined by just the absence of illnesses, but instead by a state of mental, physical and social well-being. As per this definition, then we can factually say that if someone is overweight or obese and they do suffer from any complications related to their weight, whether it be diabetes, high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol or blood sugar, kidney disease, breathing problems, heart disease or even cancers, then they are not healthy because they are not free from illness. But even if someone doesn't suffer from these illnesses, then we can still not generalize whether they are healthy or not because that generally depends on what the person's perception of mental, physical and social well-being means to them. For example, if you are overweight, obese or even morbidly obese and you don't suffer from any of the illnesses, but yet you have anxiety about whether you may develop a condition as a result of your weight, have difficulty performing daily tasks on your own because of your weight, if you depend on physical equipment to move around comfortably, if you find it hard to keep up with other people on physical activities without running out of breath, if you struggle with your mental health because of your relationship with your own body or because of how others treat you or perceive you because of how you look or because of your weight, if you experience guilt towards food or if you engage actively in disordered eating behaviors such as binging or emotional eating as a primary coping mechanism, if you have trouble maintaining friendships or romantic relationships with others because of how you perceive your own body, or many other examples, then are you healthy? To finalize, I would just like to highlight the fact that contrary to what many people seem to think, people who are overweight or obese do not generally choose to be that way. There are many reasons why someone may struggle with their weight or have trouble losing their weight because of things that they cannot control. For example, gaining weight as a result of certain diseases or disorders, aging and weight gain due to menopause, genetics and family history, weight gain as a result of medication side effects, weight gain as a result of recovering from eating disorders, as well as weight gain as a result of suffering from eating disorders. I think in cases like this, the dialogue needs to be shifted between it's okay to be fat to it's okay that you look like this right now. Some of these movements support the dialogue that you should just own it and say, you know what, I'm fat, I was born like this, I'm going to be like this forever, deal with it, I don't care. But that is not a really healthy response. Saying that it's okay to be fat normalizes posing yourself to a higher risk of diseases and illnesses when science has shown that even a 5% decrease in body weight has tremendous improvements in the risks associated with developing those illnesses. But when you're compassionate with yourself and you say, you know what, I can't control this, but 
it's okay that I look like this right now. It doesn't stop you from trying to have healthy habits that even may improve your condition by as little as 1%. Actions that you can control, like eating a healthy diet, going for walks, or just in general doing anything that makes you feel good and healthy, should be applauded as trying to live as healthy of a life as you can. And at the end of the day, you should still be able to look at yourself in the mirror and be compassionate with yourself and say to yourself, you know what, I look like this right now. I can't fully control it, but it's okay. In my mind, this is a much better attitude and dialogue to be having with yourself. And with that, I just ask everyone to be kinder with each other. Remember that your size does not dictate your worth, your weight is not your identity, and self-love means that you can change and make improvements at any time you want. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.